Uh, so we've got some stories that we're going to talk about today. Um, the first thing being from uh, UPI's Odd News. Men pass a giant beach ball 673 times for a Guinness World Record. A serial Guinness World Record breaker in Idaho teamed up with his brother and a friend to break the record for the most giant beach ball passes in three minutes. Yeah. Also known as three guys with nothing better to do. Could you imagine their YouTube channel? <laughs> there wouldn't have any hot blondes out there. They'd be like, hey, remember that time they, they I rolled a natural YouTube. 20? They have, like, poo-too. Tutu? Poo-too. Poo-too. Yeah. <laughs> we need shots. Did we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need shots. So, um... Apparently, this is what we have to do in Idaho now, is uh, get, I mean, I wonder if they were high. I was going to say, get high and throw a damn big giant beach ball. Well, you could do that and throw it, what, 600 and 73 times? times. I could do it 674 times. What if I just passed it back and forth to myself? People at Guinness Book of World Records, you know their phone calls are fucking weird. <laughs> hey, I'm sure they are. my brother Bill has a nose hair that fucking long. Y'all want to come measure it and tell me if it's worth anything? Uh, here's to stupid shit found on the internet. What powers this show? This is Fireball, by the way. Like it would be anything else. So yeah, thank you, my dear. Mm. So this is for the um, for the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm gonna pull that microphone just fist fist length away from me, oh, as Joe Rogan always says. Get 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 about a fist in there. Joe Rogan knowing a lot about a fist. <clears throat> Long-tailed bat wins New Zealand's Bird of the Year contest. A New Zealand conservation charity announced its coveted Bird of the Year award has been won by the first ever non-bird entered into the competition. A bat. Yes, because the headline makes me go, you know, you know that's a mammal? Because it has babies and makes milk for them. Um, and doesn't lay eggs and has furs and is warm-blooded. Uh, but apparently, um... What, what the fuck's a bird? A bird? Avian? Zeus. Um, Zeus. Zeus would be a bird. Zeus? The name Zeus. The name Zeus? That'd be a bird. That'd be a badass yeah. bird. You want to have a bird <laughs> named Zeus? No, I'm just talking about that bird. That, that bird named Zeus. You want a bat named Zeus? Yeah. No, I don't. That does. <laughs> Next! <laughs> California's fake fire... I'm sorry, a California family's fake fire Halloween display prompts 911 calls. Oh no. A California family's Halloween decorations prompted calls to 911 about a house on fire. But the flames and smoke were merely a festive special effect. Because people are so bored at home, fearing for their lives of COVID. That when they see, I, I, there's red things on the windows over there. At least a bunch of people called. Well, think about <laughs> versus not giving a shit. You can order all your groceries now. You never have to leave your fucking house. You look out your window and you see red windows across the street. Oh no! Yeah, they have pictures of it. It's just red windows. It's all it's some red blocks. <laughs> Social media reunites Pennsylvania man with lost wedding band. A Pennsylvania man who. A Pennsylvania man who incorrectly assumed his wedding band had fallen down the sink drain at his home was reunited with the Lost Ring thanks to a social media post from a local business and nothing better to do with their time. So I what guess. Some dumbass logged into Facebook, sees a ring that he used to own, and so, hey, was told about a crackhead. What size is it? Looks good. Bear Raid's <laughs> leftover KFC from California Man's kitchen counter. A California man said he returned home to find two bears were inside his house. 
one's name was Todd and the other one was Michael. And we smelled the chicken walking by. And we just had to come over and have some. And one was snacking on leftover fried chicken in the kitchen. Hey, my name's Mike. You got some good damn chicken. Should we keep going? Should mm -hmm. we find out? I yeah. want to hear what this guy's voice sounds like in my head. In your and head. Will too. I don't want to hear that too. <laughs> It'll be interesting. John Holden said the bear was outside of Sierra Madre home when he arrived at the house and noticed the front door was wide open. As we wait for the pop-up to get out of the fucking way, Holden said he went inside and discovered and discovered the inside. Wait, wait a second. Holden said he went inside and discovered the inside. I think they meant the bear inside. And one was snacking yeah. on a bucket of KFC chicken that had been left on the kitchen counter to cool off just like the fucking porridge. See, now it's Bear Lives Matter. Don't forget. The resident said he Lies has encountered honey. bears outside the house on multiple occasions. Hi, my name is Chris. But nice. they never had gone inside before. I've had a lot of... I'm sorry. I've had a lot of other encounters with them. I've actually had them bump into me several times in the backyard, but definitely never in the house like that. Oh my goodness. That was something else they... What? That was something else. That was something else they made sure... <laughs> and they sure they made, made a, a mess of the place. Okay, now look, there's shit popping <laughs> up and a lady doing yoga in the fucking dairy oh, section over here. Her and I'm kind of fucked up right now looking at her. Mm -hmm. And he, he said the bears have likely been drawn into the home by the smell of fried chicken. Mm -hmm. He said the animals lingered in his yards for a while after he chased them outside. How do you chase a fucking bear off a bucket of KFC? You pro I bet you there's somebody around here that has done something like that. Whether it be beer or whatever. I'm just talking in this part of the mountains. Sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, now we're having the, um, the clickbait inside the clickbait. Uh, a hungry bear recently made an unexpected appearance at a wedding reception in Mexico. Yes, he had just showed up. He was not wearing his little suit and his little sequins and riding his little bicycle, you know, with the little hat on. He wasn't doing that shit. He was just showing up there. He's like, my boy Juan, get married tomorrow. It's going to be real. A video filmed at the party in, oh shit, Chippeniku Ecological Bar in Nuevo Leon shows the Bruin investigating a table at the reception searching for food before being chased away. And that was all they had to say about it. But look, I just gave you a few minutes of honest, good, old American entertainment by talking shit. If, if y'all didn't hear about the whole LeBron fucking bear that went over there to check out the uh, the what was going on. Family history book found at Minnesota thrift store returned to family. They couldn't sell the damn thing. Nobody gave a fuck. A family history book found by the owners of a Minnesota thrift store was returned to the family thanks to the detective work of a stranger. Yeah, the, the Nelson family tree. It's got a shitload of people listed in there. I bet it had something to do with the And you might Nelson. be able to find their next of kin by the 400 fucking people in their family tree. No. Google. Google it. Google. The Nelson family tree. I would be interested in hearing if that goes on and on and on. Uh, I'm not young Jamie. I wish I was. Well, I can't even see my damn cursor. There we go. Sorry. It's all good? It even came up. The Nelson family <laughs> history. You can oh, find sorry. birth dates, death dates, addresses, and more on ancestry.com. Uh, Nelson name meaning English and Scottish. <laughs> Patronymic from the medieval personal name Nell or Neil. Anglo Scandinavian forms of the Gaelic name Neil. Nile, see Neil. 
This was adopted yeah. by the Scandinavians in the form Njal, N-J-A-L, and was introduced to the northern England and East Angelia by them, rather than being taken directly from the Gaelic. Americanized spellings of the like-sounding Scandinavian names are Nelson, Nielsen, and Nilsson. So it could be the Nielsen. Yeah, that's the last time I Googled some shit where you're like, yeah, I Google see what this is. Let's try to find something that's not stupid. There we go. Loose llama. llama escapes again hours after capture. A llama that spent days on the loose in North Carolina if I'm going to be a llama on the loose. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to go to fucking North Carolina. I'm going to go to the Outer Banks. I'm going to make me a fucking sand castle. Never seen And then I'm going to go skiing mm. up in Boone. Was captured by local authorities, but escaped again just hours later. I I'm you. gone, bitches. I'm out. <laughs> I'm the coolest lava. Uh, the High Point Police Department. If I was ever going to be a policeman, it would uh, be for the fucking High If I high was point. ever going to be a llama, I'm always going at the out, high point. doing my own thing. I damn sure ain't gonna do it in High Point, North Carolina. <laughs> a llama that spent days on the loose in North Carolina was captured by local authorities, but it escaped again just hours later. The High Point Police Department said animal control officers responded to a neighborhood where a resident reported the loose llama was wandering through yards and like tapping on windows, Evidently. sending dick pics, and doing all the other fucking things the llama's tap, gonna tap, do. Tap. <laughs> the resident let, fed the llama apples to keep it from leaving before officers arrived. <laughs> oh, don't you feel so fucking punked? Oh, come Lord on, don't you want an apple? <laughs> By the fucking apples, all the ladies want. out there going, don't you want some fucking apples? Come in, me. me. <laughs> Animal control officer Holly Lackey, she's such a fucking lackey. Holly Lackey said officers worked with animal rescue expert John Deal to capture the llama. You know what John Deal said? Hey, do you have any apples? He learned that from them. <laughs> okay, oh That's shit. how much time I got. <laughs> Here we go. This is Holly Lackey. We got him cornered, and then the one guy watched a video on YouTube which told you how to encircle the animal and close in until you grab his rope. So that's what we did and got him into the trailer to take him to an animal rescue farm where he escaped again a few hours later. That I'm out, bitches. Catch a with you later. Catch a with you later. Yo, you want anything for Taco Bell? Police confirmed the llama nicknamed Todd. Or is it Todd? By officers, indeed, flew the coop for a second time just hours after the capture. Todd Double D. Todd with the double D. That's right. Now we think he <laughs> gave me somewhere <laughs> near Stokesdale. Stokesdale. Now, oh, wait, 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 wait. Now we think he may be somewhere near Stokesdale, like he said. And that's the end of the article about the uh, llama running amok out there in the uh, North Carolina area where I used to live. There is a herd of cows wandering loose through a Hawaiian community. Residents of a Hawaiian community said a herd of cows has been wandering their neighborhoods for, for weeks. weeks. Now what they are doing is picking on all these women that are trying to lose weight. What? And they shouldn't be doing that. They what should be nice. That? They shouldn't be calling people with some fake bullshit about cows. Why? Wandering. How many oh, cows wait. do you see in There's Hawaii? There's video. Those are actual cows. Okay. Yes. Residents of a Hawaiian community said a herd of cows has been wandering their neighborhoods for weeks. At least three cows. That's Margaret, Jane, and Mary, and you better be nice about it. At least three cows were spotted, were spotted on Halloween. Okay, now they're just dressed as cows. Through the residential yards in Maca, Macaquila. <laughs> Macaquila. Me, man. I couldn't do it. And the bovines <laughs> were caught on camera by local women, Fina Bononan. Bonan? Bonan. Oh, hey, that's good to me. Who posted the image to Facebook. See, I'm reading you bullshit. They got clickbait out of a fake, fake, fake book post. Yes. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook yep. post. Fake, good grief. Facebook. 
Wow. I'm getting my ass kicked right now. Are you missing cows and Mikaliko? <laughs> Makakilo? They get Ma They get Makakilo. Makakilo. Okay. Are you missing cows and Makakilo? Banone wrote. Another resident reported seeing at least 10 cows at the Makakilo Community Park on another occasion. Okay, are these fucking trailers? Being cows? They don't Long take trailers out to fucking. Hawaii, dude. Can you see them sailing the fucking trailer? Cows in Hawaii? They, got, they got the little double wide, right? And it's in two pieces, and then they got little cars, or a little, little they boats. They got a lava line going down in between things. them, or some shit. In Hawaii? You're feeling good, ain't you? Hell yeah. Yeah, you are. Okay! Hold on. The resident said that the cows have been wandering for weeks. Okay, here's, here's a, uh, this is a lady. It's one of those things that in every afternoon or every early morning, you can hear that mooing from the deck. Resident Carlos! Oh, Josie, I got your ass. And it's pretty me, you know. I am from Texas, so it's like it reminds me of home. See, y'all thought it was going to be in another direction because that shit was in Hawaii, but I was reading ahead and I know what the fuck was. Nicole Galise, Managing Director of the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council, said the owners of the cows are working to try to wrangle the bovines. Gal Galise said drought conditions are leading the cows to seek new grazing locations. Women. I'm, I'm looking to see who is saying it. When we are in a severe drought condition, when they see the water and, or green grass on the other side, like all the fences, the cattle will continue to try to break that fence, she said. I know we're in Hawaii, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> That's the accent that came out when I was going to yeah, say it. Mean, it was better than what I was thinking. It was like when Fluffy <laughs> went to Hawaii, and then it was like, they're all here. What, mm -hmm. hell, what the hell happened? Uh, let's see. That was so good. Okay. <laughs> police hunting oh, for a God. loose monkey spotted in Tokyo. So was that the police were hunting for the loose monkey that was spotted in Tokyo, or was the police, police spotted hunting. in Tokyo hunting for the monkey? Sure. Uh, police in sure, Tokyo yeah. are trying to locate a loose monkey in the city after the primate was spotted near a religious shrine and a subway station. Now, please understand, I am quite confused here because he's I like, mean you both I'm going to pray to... They're in Tokyo. Allah. They don't pray to Allah in Tokyo. Tala. Well, I guess the Muslims do. He was making his prayers to whoever people in Tokyo pray to. Buddha? Are they Buddhist? Sounds good to me, man. Okay, if you're a Buddhist and then you're in Tokyo... You and you pray at this religious shrine, that's awesome. Whoever you pray to, go ahead, dude. It's up to you. But I want to know where the hell he went on the subway station. Do you think he got on the car and just rolled? He may oh, have. Oh, they're going to say names in here, and I'm going to have to try he to pronounce have. them, so y'all going to have a good time with this. Uh, <laughs> do, 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 do. Police in Tokyo are trying to locate a loose monkey in the city after the primate was spotted near a religious shrine and a subway station. The Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department said officers from the... Oh, God, here we go. Kitza, Kitazawa Police go. Station responded Monday when a monkey was spotted in a tree at the Setagaya Hachimangu Shrine in Setagaya Ward. How nice. about that for nailing nice. all those fucking words I had to say? Good. <laughs> y'all aren't seeing it. <laughs> y'all need, yeah, need to go to upi.com forward slash odd news and uh, you'll see. It. Here we go. An alligator walks off with golfer's ball at Mississippi Golf Course. November 2nd. On November 2nd, a golfer in, on a Mississippi course faced an unusual hazard when an alligator grabbed his ball in its jaws and carried it off to a nearby pond. I wonder if it was the right one. Or the left one. Or both. Well, he said his ball. He didn't say his balls. 
Yeah. I'm guessing it was his golf ball. But, but you're ball. also talking about Ben Harper or whatever up there. Right a now. golfer on a Mississippi course faced an unusual hazard when an alligator grabbed his ball in his jaws, the left one, and carried it off to a nearby pond. Mm, these balls show do taste good. Victoria Williams said her husband, Keith Williams, was playing in a tournament at Wind Dance Golf Course in Gulfport when his ball ended up near a pond on the 12th hole. I swear, baby, that's where it was all day. The golfers captured video when an alligator strolled up to the ball, grabbed it in its jaws, and carried the ball off to the pond. Well, get you, you fucking asshole. <laughs> the U.S. Golf Association's rules state in such an instant... <clears throat> <clears throat> Such an incident should result in a free drop. Okay, hold on. Let's see here. Drop. <laughs> oh, they don't say who's saying it. Okay. We can do it whatever. Rule 16 covers when and how the player may take a free relief by playing a ball from a different place, such as when there is an interference by an abnormal course condition or a dangerous animal condition. The rule state. You know how long it took them to come up with those words. I know. It I don't want to. I know somebody get paid by a word make all this clip, <laughs> gate, clip bait, and I'm just going there for you guys. I get fucked up. I go look at the clip bait. I'm out of my own fucking business. I need a damn. I need a. Okay, we're just gonna have to have a pause for the calls here, cause I'm reading more than the motherfucker on News 11. <laughs> Well. Y'all want to hit fast forward for 15 seconds on your Spotify right now. You do that. Where is that lighter, lady? In my hand. It's <laughs> trying to help. rescued from front grill of car in California. Animal rescuers in California said a coyote managed to avoid any broken bones or fractures when it became trapped in the front grill of a car. It was in hot pursuit of a roadrunner, which was quoted as saying, meet me. The coyote never had anything wrong. Sometimes he was like an accordion. He's like, wah, 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 you know, walking away. That's why he was rescued. And then sometimes you'd see a squash. But see, sometimes at the end of the cartoon, you would see a, a car or a bus, fire, you know, and they go by. And it, he was just gone. And that was the end of it. Okay. Well, finally, we found out what happened. He got rescued when they got to California. Well, that's it's cool. It's all good. That's a uh, okay. British firefighters rescue ferrets stuck between concrete posts. Firefighters in a Britain res firefighters in Britain rescued a stray ferret found wedged between a pair of concrete fence posts. They uh, decided to give a damn. Click on the link and see what happened. <laughs> Firefighters in Britain. The RSPCA said Inspector Karen Goodman James. This is what happens when y'all start hyphenating at home. When Karen Goodman James was called to a road in Appleton, Cheshire, when a member of the public found the ferret trapped between two poles, Goodman James said she quickly determined. The ferret couldn't be merely lifted from its predicament. No, she tried using her fingers. That didn't work, so she summoned the Cheshire Fire Service for assistance. Wow. <laughs> Firefighters <laughs> used rescue equipment to push the posts away from each other, creating enough of a gap for the ferret to be removed. Yes, it was probably maybe like a uh, axe handle or... Uh, some kind of uh, strong armed uh, farm utensil. Go on with it. Goodman James said the <laughs> ferret was not injured and was taken to the RSPCA's Stably Grange Wildlife Center in Nantwich, Wisconsin. Nantwich, 
where it will be rehomed if its owner can't be found. Uh, yes, look, I'm imagining that ferret's life was so bad that it was witches. It was like, I, I'm not going back. I don't Shit. care if I die. I thought mine was bad. Damn. <laughs> he got, he, I wasn't wedged under two different pieces of metal. Squished I in saved between. her from a bad life. It's just an awesome story. Italian couple confronted by an endangered bear on their balcony. Help me, I'm the last one of my kind. I'm a couple living near a national park in central Italy said a suspected burglar they heard on their balcony turned out to be an endangered brown bear. I didn't know it, it, Italian people were into eating bra bears. So they what? don't eat bears. They, they don't bears. eat them. They're too pretty. No. <laughs> Annalisa Costanagna said in a Facebook post, yes, that is where they got this bullshit clickbait from, was a Facebook post, that she and her husband, Claudio Paravano, thought a burglar was on their balcony and... Pesco Soliodo, <laughs> a village bordering Abruzzo National Park. So they went outside to investigate. Yes, because these people are very <laughs> fucking old. They are so old they think that burglars well, go out on your fucking balcony. But but see, they didn't go out in the ice and all that. They sent people out there, so they were good. Okay, I don't know how to do an Italian accent, so it's probably going to sound a little Mexican to some of y'all, but don't be mad at it. Castaño said the investigation turned out to be a close encounter with a bear. We were face to face less than a meter away. The woman said she was close to the bear. The woman said that she was so close to the bear that she could count all, sorry, count all of the teeth that he had in his mouth plus the red tongue. And she was like, uno, dos, tres. So you were going one, two. Th no, this lady's in Italy. They they count in Spanish. Because they, they, no, they don't. They do it in Italian, but you know what? You I don't know. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Because Tanya fled back inside the house, but Parvano ended up jumping off the balcony to a fade the bear and breaking a hip. He is now recovering from a fractured pelvis, Castagna said. Yes, because yeah. old people doing stupid shit. But Pesco, <clears throat> Pesco Solido Mayor Donato Belsario. I would need a what he just heard. <laughs> said the park is home to about 60 endangered Marcian bears. M-A-R-S-I-C-A-N. Yeah. Yeah. Marsican? Marsican bears. I'd just go with it. <laughs> he said authorities visited the couple's balcony to try to determine what drew the bear to their home, but they were unable to identify any likely causes. Maybe they had a bucket of KFC on the counter. We had gone to get this KFC, and it's it was possibility. good. Possibility. They probably don't have KSC in Italy. A what Mar the hell? They wouldn't have no KSC. A Marsican <laughs> bear. A Marsican bear. A Marsican bear. Marsican. I'm going to say it every fucking way somebody's going to call me and bitch at me or send me a bitchy email or whatever. A Marsican bear was spotted just a few days earlier in the nearby village of San Donato Valdicomino. Something about a horse. The of bear course. was photographed <laughs> bathing itself in a fountain on a public garden. It was unclear whether the bear was responsible for both sightings. Yeah, hi, yeah, I'm that bear. I was there on both of them. My name's Philip. Okay, so that was the bear story. <laughs> Another bear story. Uh, every time they're going to do that, I'm going to do that voice. If y'all don't like it, I'm fucking sorry. I think it's funny, and I hope you enjoy it. All right. We, Sorry, uh, my top keeps falling down. Well, that's <laughs> not always a bad thing. Uh, we talked about cows walking up across people's yards and shit. Uh, do 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 do. Yeah. Did you see the uh, curious parrot investigating the highway traffic camera 
Workers with a Brazilian highway management company received a surprise when a curious Amazon parrot flew up to investigate a traffic camera. That's all over fucking Google. It's all over Facebook right now. And it's just a traffic camera where you see a road with like cars going by, boom, 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 you know, whatever they're doing. And then uh, it turns out that you just see this like parrot head come down. It's almost like there's a turtle head, but it's a parrot head. And it goes out and he's like, no, I'm not to work yet. And it goes back up again. You, you just see it's like it's one eye. <laughs> yeah, you can see this one. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Because you can probably hear gears whirring and shit in there. Uh, a woman walking on Alaska beach finds a message in a bottle from 1987. Oh, it said, I love those acid wash jeans. And could Metallica get any better? A woman walking on an Alaska beach is trying to unravel the mystery of an unusual discovery. A message in a bottle apparently launched in 1987. Seven, seven, seven. That's how we've been saying that for a year. Oh, here, here we go. Pam, Pam Joy, Joy of Skagway said she was walking on the beach at the uh, Day of Flats when she spotted a bottle with a group of washed up logs, branches, and other debris. How does she know? Well, she, she identified it in a Facebook post for where they probably got this stupid-ass clickbait from. Joy yeah, opened exactly. the bottle and discovered a written message on a sheet of paper. <clears throat> Happy New Year, 1987. Seven, seven. I'm sorry, I had to do that echo every time. Just It's something That's I used to do with Holbrook all the time. Minutes. It's whatever. The message <laughs> was not signed, and it did not say where the bottle was launched. Joy said, I'm guessing it came from uh, some drunk person who uh, threw the empty bottle off a beach uh, during the fucking New Year celebration. I'm littering, but it's cool because there's a the message 80s. written on it. <laughs> it's the 80s. Maybe it hasn't traveled very far. Or maybe it came from Australia. <laughs> who knows? Joy told KHNS FM. Yes, this is a call in radio show <laughs> that they have invented clickbait from. Joy said she is hoping to find the, the center, center of the bottle. Too bad they didn't leave a self addressed stamped bottle. I really wish that I had some way to identify who it was, or how far it's come from, or where it came from. I know that's annoying as shit, isn't it? I think it's funny. <laughs> I would like to be able to let the person know who wrote this. And I, I found it. Where I found it? Okay. She said. She said. Man, that's all we had to find out about the stupid lady walking in Australia that found the stupid bottle. Then she's going to try to get in touch with somebody from, no, what, no. fucking a long damn no. 33 no. fucking years ago. No. I hope you have no. uh, An Alberta teenager broke a Guinness world record when he saw 300 Rubik's Cubes while keeping his balance on a unicycle, proving there is nothing to do when you are a teenager in Alberta, Canada. Well, it might have been during their version of the COVID and all that. I'm trying to give him some credit here. Could have been what he was doing versus sitting on the couch watching a movie. All right. Bear breaks in the unlocked car in Colorado. Poops in the back seat. It was a homeless bear. Oh, my name's Dennis. Police in Colorado said a bear broke into an unlocked car and left behind a trashed interior and an extra special surprise in the back seat. The Aspen Police Department said the bear bandit apparently opened one of the vehicle's unlocked doors and climbed inside to shred the seats and tear apart the doors from the inside. The suspect left an extra special surprise in the back seat, the department said, in a Facebook post <laughs> using an emoji to indicate the bear had defecated inside the car. Mm. The department said the incident should serve as a reminder to be bear aware 
and keep cars, homes, and trash secured from the animals. Now, here we do not worry about bears. We have wild, feral cats that love to get into our trash and rip those bags open. But Elvis, the Great Pyrenees that is outside for right now, takes care of all that shit. Hong Kong Sisters amass a collection of 3,388 lip balms. A pair of young sisters from Hong Kong, yep, I'm going to try to say them. A pair of young <laughs> sisters from Hong Kong earned a Guinness World Record when they amassed a collection of 3,388 different lip balms. Why? Scarlett Ashley Shang, six, told the Guinness World Records she and her sister, Kaylin, eight, she doesn't have two names. It's just Scarlett Ashley Shang and Kaylin. Kaylin. Hey, Kaylin there's Kaylin. Started collecting lip balms when the young, younger sister was only a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. It I'm all sorry. started when I was having dry lips when I was little, Scarlett said. And that's my overdubbed voice, by the way. My parents and grandma used to, used to put lip balms on my lips every day to keep them moist. At first, it was just plain without any flavors, and then I was very young. As I grew older, I started to try out different flavors. Okay, so the sisters' collection now includes varieties of lip balm from around the world. I'm not going to do the annoying thing anymore. Over the last few <laughs> years, collecting lip balms has been one of my hobbies because I'm boring as hell because of the way they look, they taste, and they feel. Scarlet said they feel. What do they feel like? The sister said they have also started making their own DIY lip balms at home and giving them out as gifts to friends and family. And you know what those people said? They said, Thanks! Hey, oh, did you make this? And, uh-huh. Oh, you did a good job. And as soon as those kids hear their turn, they're like, get that fucking thing out of here. Where's trash can? <laughs> yeah, we uh -huh. just did it. Where's oh, trash we're recycling. It's fine. Well, they were in Japan, right? So, uh, no, Hong I'm Kong, not even yeah, trying. Hong Kong, okay. <laughs> Hong Kong, wherever the fuck Hong Kong to China, I don't give a shit. I don't know where any goddamn thing is right now. Um, uh, where's my drink? This is what I need to have right now. Mm. I'm on it around. Boy, when we were this deep in fucking fireball, that wasn't the first shot. That was just the last shot. That was the shot. second. It wasn't the last. I'm That's why I'm doing this shit. I'm trying to read over here being a dummy. <laughs> New Zealanders find 17 pound potato in feral vegetable garden. A New Zealand couple said they were cleaning out their vegetable garden when they found a 17 pound potato. And it might be a new world's record. Colin and Donna Craig Brown. She's one of those chicks that wants to hyphenate that last That's name. Them, Colin man. and Donna Craig Brown. Boy, you know she wears the fucking pants in the family. Donna and Craig Brown. Colin and Donna Craig Brown said they initially weren't even sure of what they had discovered under a few inches of dirt in their Waikato garden. Nice. Nice. Where the fuck are they from? Australia? No, New Zealand. Okay, same deal. Same difference. That side of the world. I said. I said to Donna, this must be one of those white Kumara that we grew. Colin Craig Brown told the Suffco of New Zealand <laughs> because some of them just grew massive here. It's Craig Brown mouse. said it. I don't. Fuck, I'm making it up. Craig Brown said, <laughs> because some of them just grew massive here. How about that? Is that closer? Yeah. Okay, Craig Brown said it only after he stabbed it, <laughs> stabbed at it with a fork, that he discovered the item was a potato. Well, I'm glad it wasn't anything important. <laughs> I said to Donna, it's a potato. And she went, no. no I, I said, said, yeah, it is. He recalled to News Hub. See, this is two different fucking places. 
that they have taken this bullshit from and condensed it into one piece of clickbait that I'm reading for you guys. The couple said the potato, which has been growing in their garden for a couple of years before being discovered, weighed 17.4 pounds. The couple applied, applied to give the potato, which they dubbed Doug, recognized as the world's largest by Guinness Book of World Records. I keep wanting to add Guinness Book, but it's, it's just right. Guinness World Records. It's all right. The current record holder is an 11 pound spud grown by British gardener Peter Glazebrook in 2011. Colin Craig Brown admitted the home's garden has can sometimes be get up. God damn, I can't even talk. Colin Craig Brown admitted the home's garden. The home's can garden sometimes. can get can sometimes get a bit feral. There are some parts of the garden you need to pack a lunch and advise your next of kin before heading into. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, and see, there's this brain thing under it, and I'm trying to look at that under everything, and there's just fucking shit about COVID on the side that keeps popping up. Clickbait. Yeah, it's all the clickbait. It's see, I'm here's what I'm doing. I'm overdosing on clickbait, and I'm regurgitating it back to you, so you don't have to fucking fuck around and click on this shit. Animal rescuers tranquilize loose bison in New Jersey neighborhood. Animal rescuers in New Jersey came to the assistance of police to capture a 2,500 pound bison that escaped from a farm and headed to a nearby neighborhood. I'm going to kick their asses when I get there. And they shot his ass. He was like, I don't feel so good. And apparently he took a nap in a place with a lot of leaves. American doll, oh god, this. American girl dolls risk and sand inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame. Here we go. I'm sorry, I had to adjust my damn headphones. Here we fucking go. Uh, November 4th, a New York Museum's Toy Hall of Fame. See, this is just... this. Hey, my name is Ricky Barnes, and this is my fucking basement museum. You know, okay, a New York museum's Toy Hall of Fame announced the 2021 inductees are, drum roll, American Girl Dolls, Board Game Risk, and yes, since the beginning of time, this has existed. Sand. The Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, yeah, everybody knows about that fucking place. Inductees were chosen from a field of 12 finalists that also included Battleship, Billiards, Cabbage Patch Kids, The Fisher Price Corn Popper, Mahjong, Masters of the Universe, The Pinata. Settlers of Catan and the Toy Fire Engine. <sighs> American Girl Dolls created by educator Pleasant Roland in 1986. Risk, which is based on the French game Le Conquet du Monde. And was first, maybe it's Monde and was first published in the United States in 1959 and sand the substance found at beaches around the world were inducted during a special ceremony at the museum yes I see that although some playthings can only be found online or in certain stores sand has a global reach that most toy manufacturers would envy. It's been a vehicle for play since prehistory, and anyone who has spent the day at the beach can understand the allure of this toy. The strong chief cura curator, Christopher Bench, said in the announcement, he just relabeled sand as a is that toy. What this is about? I was wondering. <laughs> So we cannot have a warning on sand that says, warning, this is not a toy. No, not after that dumbass decided he was relabeling sand as a toy. 
Wildlife officers free entangled buck from badminton net. Wildlife officers in Colorado rescued a deer found with its antlers entangled in a resident's badminton net. Oh no. Colorado Parks and Wildlife said officers were dispatched to an address in Evergreen where two bucks were found with their antlers caught in the net. Wow. And you thought fishing was the only use of a fucking net. Hell no. There's I'm going look. out and I'm getting me some damn bucks this year. I got me a fucking badminton net. I'm stringing that motherfucker up between and put me some damn corn down. One of the bucks was able to free itself before officers arrived. Oh shit, dude, it's the cops. Run. But the other needed help from the officers. Dude, don't call my parents. Who cut through the net to free the deer. Wildlife officials said the incident should serve as a reminder, as they always do. Wildlife officials said the incident should serve as a reminder to keep sports nets and other potential hazards put away when not in use. Thank you, Mommy. Moose crashes through window into Saskatchewan classroom. Now, see, I've only heard Saskatchewan so many times that I know I can just see that word and I know what it is. A school in Saskatchewan, Canada, experienced an unusual interruption when a moose ran through a large glass window and crashed into a classroom. Witness Jamie Melnick said she was dropping her two-year-old deuce off in the toy, dropping her two-year-old son off at the daycare, which is attached to Sylvia Fedoruk School in Saskatoon, Saskatoon, when the moose crashed into the classroom just across the hall. I wonder if going, oh yeah. No? The school said, oh. what? Oh, sorry. Are you good? Okay. The school set up a before school program was just wrapping up in the room at the time of the moose's Thursday morning entrance. And he said, ta da! And the students were safely ushered out of the room as the dazed animal slumped to the ground. Baby. I had so much to drink last night. <laughs> Saskatoon out. Public Schools said that one child sustained minor injuries that did not require medical attention. Did you hurt yourself? Yes. Oh, no. The moose was tranquilized by authorities here, take two of these, and relocated outside the city. Officials said the rest of the school day will continue as normal, yet they didn't have nothing better to do. They got the moose out and sent them to sleep. I wonder, you know, all the other mooses are like, fuck mm. you, dude, that was so fucking cool. When you crash through the window, bro, that was fucking awesome. Minnesota police called to break up a Bald Eagle street fight. Oh, my goodness. Off November 5th, a Minnesota police officer was summoned. They drew a damn police badge in the ground and drew a circle around it and they sacrificed a virgin. A Minnesota police officer was summoned to break up an unusual street fight when two bald eagles were found struck, stuck together in the middle of the road. I don't think they were fighting. I don't think they were fighting at all. <clears throat> oh. The city of Plymouth said in a Facebook post, yes, the other place we're getting all our fucking clickbait from. Oh, shit! The city of Plymouth said in a Facebook post that Officer Mitch Martinson, another mission to fucking Brotherhood of Mitches, responded to a neighborhood on a report of two bald eagles stuck together on a Plymouth roadway. Yeah, see, if you didn't know this, birds hump like like eagles and fucking hawks and shit. They hump by like getting together and then falling. Much like my fucking headphones are doing right now at the back of my fucking head. Uh, let's see. Martin said being called to break up a street fight between two eagles was the first for him. I bet it was. And I'm going to use my own Mitch accent for this. We do have a de-escalation tactics, but I've never applied them to eagles or other animals, Martin told uh, WCCO-TV. Yeah, uh, stop that. 
Stop that now. That would probably be about uh, what I would. You know, I'm just saying, birds get together and then they're like ones and the other and they're falling. And I think this is what what happened here. Uh, the officer consulted with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources and the Raptor Center, which told him the eagles were likely in a dispute over territory. Yeah, uh, Martinson said he was attempting to cover the birds' heads to calm them down when they decided to flee the scene. The eagles started going at it again, and the next thing you knew, they were flying away, Martinson said. I don't know. They could have been fighting, but I'd rather prefer to... Think That's that in the Brotherhood of Mitches, somebody broke up some eagle porn right there in the middle of the damn street. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We did a whole lot of stuff under the house over the weekend. We have finished painting the house except for a piece of trim I'm going to do tomorrow. And uh, we're going to leave you with the bear approaches British Columbia woman on her porch and licks her hand. Fuck. Melanie Porter <laughs> says she was smoking and sitting in a chair on her front porch Thursday night in Quesnel when she spotted movement in her front yard that she initially thought was a neighborhood cat. Okay. What is she smoking? Uh, good shit. I look up and it's a bear and I freeze. Porter told the Prince George citizen, I'm thinking, oh, what? What do I do? What do I do? I'm just going to stay still. Porter said the bear walked right up to her, sniffed her, and licked her on the right hand. Porter snapped a photo of the bear standing just inches in front of where she was sitting. If, if I die, at least they'll see who the culprit is. Oh, that's hilarious. That is. Porter recalled thinking, the bear eventually backed off Porter and rushed back, and Porter rushed back inside her house. She said a neighbor's security camera caught footage revealed the bear had been watching her from the yard for some time before approaching. Dang. It was so dark and it was so quiet and stealthy. I didn't see him. He's one of them there ninja bears. I Porter said. One or no, it didn't have nothing to do with all the shit I've been out here drinking and smoking. I was sitting 10 feet away from a bear the whole time. <laughs> British Columbia is to be, believed to be home to one quarter of the entire population of black bears in Canada. Mm. Wildlife officials recommend never approaching a bear and using loud noises to keep the animals at a distance. Okay. So there you go, gang. I hope you and yours are doing a great time. April was here with me today and kissing on me and doing all that stuff. I hope you are doing good. I hope everything is going great for you. And we'll see you later, okay? Alrighty. Bye-bye.